We will teach you here on the Spartan Up podcast to get over obstacles in your mind. I'm Joe DeSena, and I am the founder of Spartan Race. We're part special ops. We're part yoga teacher. We're part monk. We're part mobster. So that we can give you a kick in the get you off the couch, give you the tools and techniques you need to achieve the goals you want to achieve. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Ensure your body gets the nutrition it needs. Athletic Greens has an offer just for our listeners. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Spartan to get a free box of 20 travel packets with your order, a $100 value. Welcome to Spartan Up Podcast. I'm with Tim Nye, Joe DeSena, Johnny Waite, Sephra, Marion, our producer. And today we're also with David Lavasseur, who's the CEO of MEC, MEC. And for those of you who don't know, MEC is the REI of Canada. It's our outdoor co-op, incredible company. If you see anyone in the world traveling with a MEC backpack, they are Canadian for sure. I, I, I was impressed. I lived in Canada, thanks yeah. to you, for a year. And um, the store is incredible. And they really, well, I don't want to tell you too much. Uh, you're going to learn a bunch. But with the one big takeaway here that I think will help everybody listening is uh, sometimes the worst thing that you're going through in your life turns out to be the best. We are here for Spartan Up Podcast. We are with um, David. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Don't, don't worry, just David is da- good. Yeah. David from MEC or yeah, MEC? Both. Either, whatever you choose. And, and for as those... As long as you say good things about it, it's I, fine. No, I say only good things because I shopped in your store before I got to know you. But how, for those out there, let's describe MEC. How many shops? We've got 23 shops across the country. Across the country of Canada. Canada, and we are like the REI of Canada. Yeah, so it's, so it's like a co-op. It's a co-op, uh, um, or at least it started as a co-op in the 70s. It's still a co-op. Still a yeah. co-op. So describe that. Now, you know, to me, the structure is, is one thing, and co-op is a, is a, a business model and where your, um, your customers are your owners. So when you become a, a customer, you pay $5, big amount, to become a, a, an owner of the organization. And really the benefits are for us is that we can focus on the long term, that our shareholders are our customers, so we can be very aligned to, to meeting the needs of the customer. But also um, that any, the, the profits we make during the course of the year, um, we give back to the, um, to the members in, in shares. So they get additional shares in the organization uh, in the ratio in which they bought during the, the year. So the biggest spenders are the biggest owners. The biggest spenders are the biggest owners, yeah. Wow. And so I, I spent some money before I met you. Yeah, but you got to spend a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> got to spend a lot of money in order to get shares. Yeah, we've got 5 million members. Wow. Yeah. Over 5 million members. Is that a common um, corporate structure? Do you see that often? Uh, it's not. It, 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 it is relatively common, not as common in larger organizations. Um, but certainly it's it's common in smaller organizations. Um, But there are trusts, mutuals, and co-ops are all fairly similarly structured. And it works pretty well because um, your owners support you to keep the business going. Yeah, I I think at the end of the day, what is most important is not the structure of the organization, but it's the the product and the service you give them um, that, that they need. And I think that our secret has really been that we have a purpose, which is to get people off the couch and out the door. And we really drive to that purpose. Um, the, the amount of money that we put back in the community, um, the grants we give to expeditions, keeping trails open, uh, conservation of the places we play, uh, enabling people to be active. Um, our events, we have one of the largest uh, event programs across the country, so we really put money back into getting people active and outdoors. Which is our mission. We want to, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to change 100 million lives, and those are couches that you're throwing away right now. They are. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, this podcast really focuses on what made you or the company successful. What are little things we could learn that we could apply to our own lives? And success is not necessarily measured in dollars. No, it's, it's not. No. So. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's a flaw in, in many people, right? We just chase the money. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. Is that I, I think we spend, for me, too many of us spend too much time evaluating ourselves against other people and what other people do and what they have. 
And the reality is, I mean, I was, you know, I was watching um, this last weekend, I was watching the CrossFit Games, and what those people are doing is amazing. I can never do that. But to me, it's important, I think, to evaluate myself, and I try and teach my kids this, is it's not what other people have or what other people are, but it's against who you were yesterday. Right. And you always, success, I think, comes in being better than you were yesterday, regardless of what that looks like. I like that. That's a great tagline. Be better than you were yesterday. Yeah. Um, and as you get older, it becomes more interesting. <laughs> it becomes <laughs> even harder, right? Yeah. You just want yesterday back. Um, you grew up in South Africa. I did. And that was pre pretty easy living? Uh, I, I grew up on a farm in South Africa, um, and so I, would, I grew up very rural. And then when, uh, in the, I, I'm a lot older than, than I, a lot of people think I am. And um, when I grew up, there was um, military subscription. So I, was, I had to go to the military and served in active combat in Angola. How old were uh, you at that point? 19. 19. Yeah. Uh, and it was during the Cold War, so it was the U.S. supporting us and the Russians and the Cubans supporting us. So it was a classic kind of Cold War thing. But that was a great experience, I mean, not a great experience in terms of, of the experience itself, but in terms of the learning. And I think if you can come out of an experience like that um, with a positive frame of mind, it sets you up for life. Would you, I, I wonder this, like if, if you or I were lucky enough to be running a country, or maybe unlucky enough to be running a country. In these days, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a job I'd want, yeah. Would you instill a, a program like that, where, where every 18 year old had to do a year? In the military? I don't think you can today. I don't think... But if you could, if you could snap your fingers, do you think it's good for, for young people? Wow, that is a, that's a fascinating question. And I think if every young person had some form of rite of passage that gave them discipline and hardship, I think it would be good for them. And, you know, we're, we're really driven... Uh, to focus on enjoyment, passion, and you know, parents are trying to protect their kids from difficulty. And one of my great philosophies in life is, is comes from Viktor Frankl. I don't know if you've read uh, *Man's Search for Meaning*. I haven't read it. Fantastic book, and he defines um, that we need to find purpose in life. It's not about finding happiness, or it, it's finding purpose. And he maintains, and I agree, that we get purpose through three things. The one is you have to be of value to someone or something. So you, you, you need to be of value to, to your country, your community, your family. Um, the second thing is you have to have passion. And I always say to young people, don't follow your passion in your career. Do what you're good at, which is the, the, sort of the value piece. But you have to have passion, whether it be an activity, whether it be a hobby, whether it be your, loving your family. Without passion of some sort, your life is worth How nothing. How do you find passion, before we get to number three? How do you find passion? For me, I, 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 I'm, I've, I've always had too much well, passion Well, I mean, I'm the things. same way. I wake up on fire. I just want to go do things. But most people don't. I, I th you know, it's a re another great question. Um, I think that very often we're misguided as to what passion is. And, you know, I very seldom have, has my passion been my work, and yet I've learned a great deal through work that has been, that, I, that I've grown and learned through but haven't had a passion for. But my passion has always been for sport and, and activity. That's, and I think for different people it's different things. And I can't answer that question, to be honest with you. It's a tough one. one it's it's one in, in, in you. One of the interviews I did... Um, he said, a great question to ask yourself if you're lost and haven't found your passion is, what would you do if you knew you'd fail? In other words, you'd be willing to do it anyway, even though you know you're going to fail at it. Yeah, that's and that, a great one. That's a great one, right? Because most people think, what would I do if it was my last day on earth? What would I do if I had all the money in the world? No, what would you do if you knew you'd fail? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great one. Yeah. And I think we're, we're often too scared to fail these days. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a fantastic question, and I, I don't have the answer for it. And then the third? So the third, which is taking us back to that discussion, which is probably the most important, is it's how we define ourselves in difficult moments. Because life is tough. And we're going to have tragedy. We're going to have difficulty. We're going to be faced with death. We're going to be faced with, with issues in life. 
And how we face those, I think, defines us. And without the ability to handle tough situations and stress, we can never truly have, have fulfilled lives. So a rite of passage, as you described it, could really help you work on those three things Absolutely. you just pointed out. And as I say, you look at parents today and they try and protect their kids from any stress at all. We should be, if good parents should be preparing their kids for the reality of life, which means disappointment, it means, um, it, it means trouble times. Challenges, obstacles, yeah. uh, everything that can go wrong does go wrong. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break and talk to, take this opportunity to talk to everybody about Athletic Greens. Yeah. We've got a great opportunity. We're up here on the top of the mountain in Morzine, France, for the uh, Spartan It Euro is just spectacular. Spartan European Championships, oh, right? Oh, I interrupted you. No, again. you're fine. <laughs> you're absolutely fine. But what we've got here is our uh, partner, Athletic Greens. Yeah. They've come along for the ride. Right? They're a great all, partner. They sent us their packets, uh, I don't know, six weeks ago or so, yeah. and we all started drinking it. And uh, I'll you tell guys you what, look better. I, well, thank you, and I feel better. And I tell you what, I really, I really like this stuff. So do I. Yeah. So, but I, it's packed with nut nutrients and vitamins, right? Stuff maybe I don't Pack normally get. Packed. It yeah. is stuff I've never heard of. You know. Yeah. I, there's I know, quite a bit here. I don't know. Yeah. And I know, Sephra, you've traveled. We the know whole that, world. guys. Well, <laughs> no, but you've traveled the whole world. You, you, you know most of these ingredients. You've drank them. But have you ever had them all at once? No. And it makes it so easy because, like, all of these things come in little vials and jars, or like they're huge fruits, or they're, you know, I mean, like, just to get all these ingredients in your kitchen. To actually stay shelf stable, that's a tongue twister. Well, some of the things I do know, like sugar and caffeine and those things, right? I don't see them on this box. <laughs> that's a great point. Like, a really you know, you know so they, apples, they, they, broccoli, right, but I'm they've got things spinach. In here. I do know a lot of the things in here. I don't know them all. <laughs> none, of, none of us know everything all. Yeah. yeah, no, so, I mean, honestly, this is uh, a forager's delight. It makes my life easier, makes me feel better, and makes me able to... Have this in the morning and then go out on adventures. And like this morning here, I found wild currants, the ribes. Like, you know, so that's a party. That's I, when you know you're in did you the drop Alpen. Them in the, did you drop them in the drink? I dropped them in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to mention something. You said uh, you've got all this in your kitchen. I'm one of those guys. I don't that, have a kitchen. I, I was going to say, I don't have a kitchen. I, <laughs> I literally do I. don't. I, I just travel and travel and travel. I don't have anywhere to stop. But the nice thing, you know, I didn't have this in my kitchen. I had this in the gondola. I've had this in planes. I've had this on trains and buses. Mm. And it's so nice that I'm not just grabbing something at the, the, grocery, the, the, the convenience store on my way by. I'm, I'm not just grabbing a quick coffee, a latte, something like that. Mm -hmm. I, pour, I pour some water in. I take my travel pack. Right. I put it in. And I've got everything. Well, they've taken away the excuses, right? 100%. I mean, busy is no it, excuse. Right. You, you, okay, I'm just going to go grab some fast food, or I, can't, I don't have time to do this. I don't have yeah. time to blend it. I don't have time to go forage it. Yeah. It's done. How many business people have you met? They're out of shape, and they go, it's just hard staying in shape right. on the road. Right. You want to oh. know what's harder? Dying of diseases caused by eating unhealthy. <laughs> Excellent point. Listen, Excellent. And you want to know what else I can say? At least it's not one-use plastic. This is a great, like, it, it's actually nice to drink out of their... What are those things called? Shakers? Yeah, well, shake, the, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it's it funny up. too. You mentioned it. It's got the it's got the shaking thing inside it. Yeah. It's so, a great instrument when you're not drinking. Well, and this honestly, I'll Multiple say. Multiple function. I, I've drank yeah. a lot of greens over the years. This stuff blends up more drinkably. Like yeah. there's no yeah. there's no uh, chunky chalky. Yeah, there's no right. Chalkiness to right. It. it really tastes like you're drinking yeah. a really delicious juice. Yeah. Well, the the powder is incredibly fine. I yep. put it with right. ice so too. So it dissolves almost immediately. Yeah. And um, and you look forward to it. You know, it's funny. I was talking to Andrea this morning. Who uh, she's like, "Where are my greens? Where are my greens?" Because she wanted it. It's delicious. You're not trying to put it aside to get something good into you. You're having both at once. So oftentimes, when we talk about cravings, right, you have to retrain your your first brain, which is your gut flora. Okay, because when because when you eat bad food, it craves bad food. It's like uh, an arabaris of uh, not epicness. And so when you, you say, drink greens, you mean an aroibus, an aroibus, an aroibus is when the snake eats its tail. That's an aroibus. I know something Sephra doesn't know. <laughs> potato, yes, potato. that never happens. I pronounce all that, my Latin that words. Be, that may be English But the point Canadian. is, the point is, it's like American Canadian. retrain your brain to like thrive and sur thrive and jive with the outdoors. All right, okay, nice. we're gonna let's go back. Let's go back to the interview. Let's go back and hear what Joe's got to say. Blessings. So, so you leave South Africa with um, a couple of dollars in your pocket. Yeah, when I left South Africa, so just to give you, I, I never wanted to leave. I, I loved my life there. I was in the ocean. I lived right near the ocean. I was in the ocean four times a week. It was fantastic. Um, but my wife at the time experienced a, I, I was attacked in the street. 
um, and we had a young kid and she got completely freaked out and wanted to leave and I always resisted it and then one day on a snowboard trip bumped into Vancouver and it's like yeah I can live in this place so phoned her and said you really want to leave and she said yeah and I said I think I found a place I can live so we moved to Vancouver with with suitcases didn't know anyone I couldn't even mail an envelope um, and looking back it was a stupid thing but it was a great life experience um, and I was in my 40s at the time uh, due to the, the foreign exchange controls at the time, you couldn't take a whole lot of money out, and we brought what we could, but it, it was probably about enough for a year's worth of survival and deposit down on a modest home and, and just to set ourselves up, and then we had to find work. After six months, I had not even yet got a job interview, and I had an international resume. You know, and I often, I, I'm, I'm Caucasian, I speak English fairly well. Um, Han handsome. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, um, I, probably more so back then, but I could not even get a job interview with an international resume. And you don't wonder that there are Asian doctors driving cabs, you know, and I think that we all need to be more inclusive and look beyond uh, our frame of mind. So sure. that's just a little aside. So you, you came, in other words, what you're saying is you expected snap your fingers, you could have got a job. I expected a job. I didn't expect the same level. I knew right. that I have to go down a few pegs, but I expected a job. So during the course of that stress, my marriage fell apart. Um, and I was, I started consulting just to, to pay the bills and was living hand to mouth. And we'd put a deposit down on a home and I could not afford the house anymore. And I had to put the house up for sale. There were days when I had to decide whether to put gas in the car to get to my consulting job or buy food. And it was the most fantastic experience. I was going to say, would you trade it for anything? No, that, that experience was, you know, as we get wealthier and as we get older, we actually lose contact with what most people have, are, are living with and the pressures of most people. And it's kind of that Mo Maslowian pyramid. You move up it and you forget about the troubles at the bottom. Sure. Um, and the day I got my first job in this organization was the day I got an offer on the house. I turned the offer down in that house, and I still live in the same house today. That's a great story. Yeah, that is a great cool. story. Yeah. So, so um, did you learn anything? Like, I don't want to go into too much personal stuff if you don't want to, but people go through tough times in relationships. The pressure broke your relationship. Anything there you would do different? Or is it just was not meant to be? It wasn't meant to be at the time. Um, I, I don't. You know, I, I, I don't blame anyone. It's just one of those things that we came from a privileged background and, and all of a sudden you're in a completely different situation and it's dire. Uh, and I, the, the stress is, is, can be significant. And I, I think different people cope with stress differently. So there's no blame and I, I, I don't think I could have done anything different. Other than really learn from just, just be better Just than yesterday. Take, suck the marrow out of that experience because it, right. it was a fantastic experience. It was awful at the time. Sure. But looking back on it, it was just, it, it was a life lesson. And then uh, somehow you catapult yourself to become CEO of this thing. You, you know what? I, I, I think you have to be ready and open for things, but luck plays a huge, opportunity and timing plays a huge role in the success of so many of our lives. I met a guy at Cornell University, um, Dr. Frank, who said um, he was playing tennis. He had a heart attack. He was laying, he was dying. There happened to be another health emergency a block away, and two ambulances showed up by accident. There you go. Had that not happened, he'd be dead. Yeah, there you go. Right? So he said, it's all luck. And I think, you know, what? too many of us think that we are where we are because we're awesome. And I think that we need to just be a little bit more, just a bit more modest about our success. Yeah, and appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So, um, any other? I mean, those are, we, we nailed some good tips there. Any any takeaways? Uh, what should people do every day to to be better? Be better than yesterday. That's my new tagline for this. Uh, be better than yesterday. Yeah. I, I think the first thing is stop comparing yourself to others. Yeah. Um, the grass is not always greener on the other side, and l just take a good look at yourself and and. Test live, live for today, yeah, and live for today, you know, yeah. and if you, if you want what someone else has got or something, you're always tomorrow, you're always tomorrow. 
So just appreciate it today and try and be better today than you were yesterday. And you can virtually guarantee happiness if somebody shops at Mac. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. <laughs> One last thing I will say it comes is, um, built into the comes product. Built in as part of the deal. <laughs> I, when I shop, they wouldn't give me a bag. Correct. And I thought that was awesome. Yeah. And and later to only find out that that's the policy. Like, what, why waste money with bags? Yeah, we're we're very aware of um, the, the the impact of our operations. Um, this building you're in is is a near passive building. It's it's very environmentally friendly. It's salmon safe. Um, our stores, our product, we work hard to reduce the impact of the chemicals and the footprint of our product. We don't give out plastic shopping bags. Um, but you, you, you live it though, you actually do what, you know, some, some companies talk about it, you actually do it. We, we live it and you, you know, it's, it's practical. You know, it, it, it really is, it's not, there's, there's no ideology, ideology behind this. We, we love the environment we live in. We love the outdoors. And if we don't look after it, we're going to cook it. And we don't want to do that. You're awesome. Yeah. I'm an owner now. Thank you. Yes, you are. <laughs> Makes me proud to be a Canadian, that guy. I tell you, I was blown away. You guys um, got to have something. <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting a whole week for that one. I, um, I, I lived in Canada for the years, I said. And uh, I was blown away with this guy. I was blown away with the store. I went shopping there before I knew him uh, this winter. And I bought a bunch of stuff because we were going skiing, and I needed a bag. And they said we don't we don't give out bags. Yeah, no, they're and, the most environmental company around. And then I met somebody who supplies them uh, equipment, and they said, "Look, they only take equipment from us if we operate a certain way, if we um, only use a certain type of pallet yeah. and a certain type of trucking." And so they really live wow. what they preach. Yeah. And here I was, like trying to carry all this stuff out without a bag, but I thought it was kind of cool. You could have gone buy, bought an ethically produced bag too. <laughs> I was say, did, they, did they not give you a cloth bag? I no, think, nothing. Did you not buy nothing. A cloth nothing. Bag? nothing. You're because on your own. It, it's, it's still bag. reduce, 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 right? Now the thing is, oh, well, if you're an outdoor person, you might come in with your, with backpack. your own backpack. Yeah, for sure. And, and if you knew it enough ahead of time. But, so, I, but even though it was like a frustration friction point, yeah. it actually was a positive one. And it made yeah, you yeah. think. If that made sense. Well, and you said at the start, you know, we're going to find out why the worst thing in your life turns out to be the best. And again, friction point, right? That thing that challenges you, that makes you redefine yourself. And um, what are you going to take from it, right? Yeah. You when, and and he went, marrow? he went, yeah, he, well, he says suck the marrow out of life, life, right? Experience. Yeah, I love that. He, um, he lives it and, uh, you know, c gets to Canada, right? Um, breaks ends up divorced, can't, he's got a whole situation, but comes out of it and becomes CEO yeah, well, not, of, this, of this company. Not only gets to Canada, he arrives at Canada at a certain soci socioeconomic level that he and his wife are obviously used to. And, but he knew he would have to step down, but he had to, it was really different. Wife right? leaves. Yeah, no <laughs> side. And, and that was really the, the friction. And, and you look at the presence he has now, right? And so I met him at, um, you did a leadership thing in Vancouver, the first time I'd ever met him. And, um, he just has a real presence, and there's a confidence that comes from having been in the fire before. No doubt about it. Um, but but he's humble yep. and uh, welcoming, and he made time for me, and he paid. Like the guy's great, yeah. and and the and the headquarters they built. Um, it, uh, I gotta say they're doing it right. There's a there's a holism now. There's like a new trend and current in the whole outdoor apparel industry. Maybe it's been going on for a while, but I was just at the Aspen Ideas Festival, and the CEO of REI spoke, CEO of Patagonia spoke, and. Um, it, there's a very similar ethos and and you know what REI did which is really cool is on Black Friday which is the most shop day of the year and they said we're closing all of our stores we want all of our employees to go out with our family right and our customers and everyone to get out and out well right in of course right yeah. of course and then there's this uh, and then there's the whole B Corp movement that Patagonia talks about and they're all going totally down the value chain and they're making sure that every facet of it is aligned with their ethos the that the wood is sustainably harvested where the pallets come from that. Um, where your fibers and uh, different mesh things are coming from that, that are, are coming from organic, you know, regenerative practices. And it's really nice to see a company, because when you're proud to wear a Patagonia or a Mech or whatever, when you're going out into these lands, and you can really know that everyone who's affected both ways yeah. in terms of that chain is having a good day, and it's a good day for the environment. And they say, just one last point, is they're saying the true form of sustainability is when you shop at a company like this, and you buy things once. You buy yeah. something really good, and then you use it forever. Yeah. So buy really good stuff and buy a lot less of it. Quality. And then yeah. keep it. And that's something I noticed yeah. about Mac, too, is they keep their stuff Excellent. really simple. Yeah. Because it's not about plaids in this year and stripes no. are in next year and neons in next year. Plaids are obviously in right now. There you go. But uh, no, but Mac, really, like, if you buy something there, 
I, I have a bag that I bought there 30 years ago that I still have. If you buy something there, you'll have it, and they actually stand behind it. Their whole thing is, we're going to make it last, and if it doesn't last, we'll fix it, because we don't want you buying another one. We want you bag. buying one. Like old-school L.L. Bean in the States, you know? And so when we look at it from instead of a single-use perspective, we say, like, these are heirloom lifetime purchases that you make. Slow down, do some research, find the product that you really want, love it, cherish it, use it forever. And with, without, with people yeah. having all their free time because they're not shopping as much as they used to, they'll be doing Spartan races. There yeah, you exactly. go, exactly. With that said, we're out of here. Toodles. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Ensure your body gets the nutrition it needs. Athletic Greens has an offer just for our listeners. Go to athleticgreens.com Spartan to get a free box of 20 travel packets with your order, a $100 value. Thanks for listening to another epic story of success. If you like our show, be sure to tell your friends about it. We want to hear from you. Just leave us a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Or if you're listening, go to Twitter and find us at Spartan Up Pod or Instagram at Spartan Up Podcast and let us know what you think. Then go subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you listen to our show. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Spartan.